Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the worldwide leader in regenerative therapies. Today's topic is one that I spoke on a few years ago, but I'd like to go back to it because there can be a lot of confusion between what PRP is and what stem cell therapy is. So let's talk about the differences between them. First, let's talk about PRP. Basically, it bl involves a blood draw from your arm, the patient's own arm, well, just like if you're at the lab. You pick the arm, and it takes out about 30 cc's or 60 cc's. That blood gets spun very rapidly in a centrifuge machine, um, and what comes out is your blood's been separated into three layers. The bottom layer they're red blood cells, very dark. We don't want those. They're actually harmful to cartilage repair and other things, so we get rid of those. We want to keep the middle layer, which is called the buffy coat, and that has a lot of white blood cells, growth factors, a lot of platelets, um, and then the top part has some, a lot of plasma, some nutrients. So that's PRP. PRP is typically used a lot for musculoskeletal, Indications such as painful knee joints, hips, shoulders, um, spine, things like that. We use it a lot for patients and it's great because it's inexpensive. It's your own blood that we're getting the uh, regenerative, you know, autologous biologic and then putting it back into you depending on where the, the ailment is. Now, let's talk about stem cells for a second. A stem cell biologic either can come from yourself, such as the bone marrow in the pelvis, or from fat tissue, adipose, and the process um, involves uh, isolating those stem cells, concentrating them, and then giving them back to the patient. That's called autologous stem cell therapy. Allogenic stem cell therapy involves tissue from a donor mostly umbilical cord tissue, which is chock full of stem cells and growth factors, exosomes, a whole orchestra of regenerative elements, and those get concentrated and then given to, to patients. The example that I think would best explain it would be knee arthritis, all right? You have this space in the knee, and as we get older, you start to lose more cartilage than you make. So there's a ratio. When we're younger, you make cartilage at this rate, you lose it at this rate, it's one to one, okay? As you get older, you still make it at the same rate, but you're starting to lose it faster. So there's a ratio imbalance that you have to deal with somehow. And some people develop a lot of pain because as the cartilage loss increases, and the joint space starts to get smaller and smaller, it can be very painful. Now, let's say you go in for a PRP therapy for your painful knee that's experiencing arthritis. What it can do is help to prevent cartilage loss, okay? But it doesn't necessarily amp up a ton cartilage formation. So they did a study at the Hospital for Special Surgery years ago on about 25 patients who got one injection of PRP and then they did multiple MRIs over the course of a year. Those patients predominantly did well, about three-fourths of those patients did very well with pain relief, but what they saw on these MRIs is that they didn't produce more cartilage on the MRIs, it just showed that it stopped losing continuously like they had been you know over the previous years all right so it can be helpful for stopping the loss of cartilage over a period of time now we don't have that same type of study looking at stem cell therapy for the knee but the theory and this kind of bears it out in the results that last a lot longer than prp is that you're affecting both reducing cartilage loss increasing cartilage formation 
So that the net net is that you get increased cartilage, not just prevention of, of the loss. So there's a big difference between PRP and stem cell. And PRP I would refer to as effective, but a minor league regenerative therapy. Whereas with stem cell itself, you're talking about a major league regenerative therapy. So keep in mind the difference. We have very few circulating stem cells in our blood um, at any one point in time. So to call PRP therapy a stem cell therapy is a misnomer. Now what we've started doing recently at our locations is taking the PRP and before <clears throat> administering it, we put it under into a special machine that applies various wavelengths of light and we photo activate the PRP. What that does is it increases the amount of growth factors, it increases the sustained release of those growth, growth factors over weeks instead of hours, and it can take some inactive stem cells in your blood and activate them, and those are called V-cells, very small embryonic-like stem cells. Photoactivation has been shown to activate those stem cells, and they then show the surface markers that are equivalent to an activated stem cell. So we use the, that, plus we typically combine it with the stem cell biologic, and the combination has been immensely effective. People often ask us, why do you do that? Well, PRP um, can act as a scaffold and it can really help the stem cells stick around more and be long, around longer to do their job. It can also help to enhance the multiplication or replication of those stem cells. Stem cells replicate, you know, one goes to two, two goes to four and so on and so forth. The PRP has a lot of growth factors, cytokines, and platelets with a lot of proteins inside those platelets that can help amplify the replicative capability of those stem cells. So that's one of the reasons we use them together as opposed to just one or, or the other as well. Visit us online today at r3stemcell.com. A lot of educational info on the site. There's a nice link to our YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos like this or patient success stories to hear how they've done with their various ailments. All right, call us for a free consultation for you or for a loved one or both with the plus one for the United States prefix, 844-GET-STEM. Thanks for watching.